Hi, this is Jill from HowToStats.com. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to perform an independent groups uh, t-test, uh, or a t-test for independent samples. And I'm, I've got data that are simulated from an actual study uh, that was published in 2004 by Brody et al. And uh, what Brody et al. examined was uh, brain sizes between smokers and non-smokers. Uh, and in particular, in this example, it's going to be based on the frontal lobe uh, sizes of these uh, participants in the study. So how do you place the data into SPSS is pretty simple. You have one column that includes your dependent variable data, which are measured on an interval ratio scale. Uh, and it goes from uh, 7.30 in this data set all the way down to 3.70. So there's a total of 36 participants in the sample. Uh, and then we've got our grouping variable next to the frontal brain volume variable. So grouping, I've got two groups, uh, zeros and ones. Got the ones at the bottom, zeros at the top. And zeros are people who are non-smokers, and ones are smokers. And how I've labeled that, you can see in variable view by clicking that tab at the bottom. And I've got values here, so zero non-smokers and one smokers. And I did that by adding values here and then adding uh, through this option here. Okay, so the analysis itself is quite simple once you've got your data entered so dependent variable here independent group here it wouldn't matter you could have your grouping variable here or your dependent variable here it wouldn't make any difference so go into analyze and compare means independent samples t-test so we got frontal brain volume here that's our dependent variable put that into test variables window and then we've got group and put that into the grouping variable box and then SPSS is going to ask you to define the groups which is simple enough click on define groups and then press uh, 0 for group 1 and 1 for group 2 so we've got our non-smokers and our smokers click continue and I'll note that it wouldn't actually matter whether you have zeros and ones here uh, whether you used 1 and 2 or 3 and 4 or 10 and 20 uh, any number would actually be useful in this grouping variable 0 and 1 is probably what most people use in this case so click OK and the output is produced by SPSS I'll just move this to make the output more visible alright so the first box that is visible in um, SPSS is the group statistics and we've got frontal brain volume uh, group non-smokers and smokers so sample size in non-smokers was 17 and in smokers 19 and then we've got the means for frontal brain volume. It's not exactly frontal brain volume that Brody et al. measured. They measured a ratio of frontal lobe volume divided by global brain volume, but we'll just say uh, brain volume for the purposes of this example. So non-smokers had a, a mean frontal lobe volume of 5.3 versus smokers with a frontal brain volume of 4.3. All right, and the standard deviations are in the in the column next to the means and we've got a standard deviation of 1.06 for the smokers and 0.946 uh, for the smokers so we can tell by looking at the means numerically there's a difference equal to about 1 5.3 versus 2 uh, 4.3 rounded and the standard deviation is about 1 if you average that the standard deviation is about 1 so the next table that SPSS produces is the actual results of the t-test but the first thing that it produces in this table is Levine's test of equality of variances and this is testing the uh, homogeneity of variance assumption so t-test assumes 
uh, the independent group's t-test assumes that the variance, or expressed as a standard deviation, uh, are the same in both samples. Now they don't have to be exactly the same, but they have to be the same to the extent that they're not statistically significantly different from each other. Even though t-test for independent groups is relatively robust to violations of this assumption, uh, you should still test it and report it in a result, in a, in a report. So what Levine's test of equality variance equaled in this analysis is an f equal 0 0.174. It's a very small f value. And the significance of this f is 0 0.679, which is not statistically significant. If you get a p-value here, a significance p-value of, p of 0 0.05 or less, you would say that the variances or standard deviations are not the same in all probability. They were probably sampled from different populations. And so we become concerned about interpreting our t-value and our p-value if the homogeneity of variance assumption does not hold. But in these data, because the significance value is not 0 0.05 or less, in this homogeneity of variance Levine's test of equality of variance test, we're confident that we can interpret the t the regular t-value and the significance level associated with this t-value. So t is equal to 3.092 with a degrees of freedom of 34 and the significance level is 0 0.004. So because this value is less than 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis of no difference between the means and state that in all probability uh, that the difference in brain volumes between uh, frontal brain volume between smokers and non-smokers is statistically significant, p equal 0 0.004. So in a, only in about four out of 1,000 samples would we expect to get this kind of result as big as this, and it only occur by chance. So in all probability, this result is not a chance finding. I'll note that underneath the equal variance assumed, uh, SPSS produces also an equal variance is not assumed uh, result, which it produces a t-value of 3.072 and adjusted degrees of freedom of 32, and the significance level is the same thing. So basically, the results are the same whether you look at the equal variances or not not equal variances, and that's because the variances are basically the same. The, the standard deviation in this case, the variances aren't outputted, you just have to square these values to get the variances, um, but these standard deviations are very similar. And that's why the two t values are the same, or very close to the same, and the significance level. Uh, SPSS also outputs the mean difference between the two means, so uh, mean 5.32 versus 4.29 gives us a mean difference of 1.3467. The standard error associated with that mean difference is also outputted by SPSS, 0.334. And then it gives confidence intervals for uh, of the difference between the means. It's quite rare to see that reported in, in a report. People typically report the actual means, the standard deviations, the t-value, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value, and then they tend not to report any of this extra information. But what SPSS very unfortunately doesn't output is the la last key piece of information in a analysis based on the mean differences in two independent groups, and that's called something, it's something called Cohen's D. And SPSS very unfortunately does not output this. It's a real disappointment. It would take very little extra computational power for the analysis to be done. Uh, but SPSS has just uh, hasn't done it. And um, Cohen's D has been around for years. Basically, uh, Cohen's D is a measure of effect size. Uh, I'm just going to speak about it very briefly in this uh, video, but the difference between the means, which we know to be about 1.03, which is here, and it divides it by the, uh, you divide uh, that value by the average of the standard deviations. And I can tell you that the Cohen's D in this case, which you have to calculate by hand, ends up equaling something like 1.03 or 1.06. So a Cohen's D that's uh, relatively large by uh, standards that are used to evaluate, evaluate Cohen's D. Anyway, that's how you perform an independent samples t-test in SPSS. Bye.